The 2023 NBA trade deadline has officially passed and has been one of the biggest deadlines in the last five years. For this year's teams involved or not, the moves not only changed rosters, but changed the outcome many of them expected come playoff time. For players, NBA trade deadline has to be a stressful part of the season as the uncertainty alone can dictate a player's life annually. Some players expect and can prepare for being traded, like a Kyrie Irving who requested his trade, Kevin Durant who has been aware since requesting his in the summer that Brooklyn would likely move on from him during the season at some point if the Nets fall out of contention to win a championship this year. I'm of the belief that a part of a handshake deal Durant and the team had was to rescind his trade request come back and give it a try or at least put the team in position by the trade deadline and in return the team would work on getting him to his preferred destination. Well, he did that, coming back and helping place Brooklyn as high as the fourth seed this year before being traded to the Phoenix Suns, which couldn't have been a better landing spot for the 13-time All-Star and former MVP other than an unceremonious return to Golden State. The Suns went to an NBA Finals just two seasons ago and were up 2-1 on the Milwaukee Bucks looking destined to win it all and give Chris Paul a much deserved first ring, not to mention the conference semi-finals last season. They're also a fifth seed in the West as he arrives with a clear shot at going all the way in 2023 with his addition to the Suns core of Chris Paul, Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton. He's been on some talented teams, but as far as fit and at this stage of his career, he's likely to flourish having a leader like Chris Paul, an aggressive scorer like Devin Booker, and easily the most talented young big he's played with in his career in Aiton. For him, an absolute win. But for the following teams or players, this trade deadline has been a worrying nightmare that put their immediate futures in dismay for the time being. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. To quickly recap on some of the headlines of this midseason deadline moves and how I feel about them, first off, five second round picks for Jay Crowder seems a bit much. The Lakers traded Patrick Beverly, who now goes to another rebuild situation with the Magic and is probably on his final run of his career for Mo Bamba who has been a disappointment for the Magic after being taken 6th overall in 2018, averaging 7 points and 1 block for his career. The Warriors finally gave up on James Wiseman's potential, trading him to the Pistons in a fresh start no pressure situation. The Clippers gave up trying to resuscitate John Wall's career, trading him to the Rockets where he'll be waived and also giving up Reggie Jackson who's been hurt and playing lackluster for a year and a half now, but acquired Bones Highland who I think is a great pickup for them, possibly playing behind Russell Westbrook should he sign with the Clippers after being traded from the Lakers to Utah and most likely bought out. Those took a backseat to the Brooklyn Nets having no choice but to blow up what has been the most disappointing last four years for any franchise, having two MVPs, a plethora of former All-Stars, three of which are still top 10 to 15 players in the game and have one playoff series win to show for it. Not to mention, they officially lost those stars for practically Ben Simmons in return. Ben Simmons. Biggest loser number one, the Brooklyn Nets. I've covered the Brooklyn Nets at least three different times in the last year because for whatever reason, it always seems dysfunction and drama were just as equally a part of their mix as great talent. From Kyrie and the vaccine mandate to James Harden leaving as a result of Kyrie not being able to play while KD was out with an injury, to Kyrie Irving not being offered a max deal, leading to Kevin Durant requesting a trade a day later, them being swept in the first round in 2020 and 2022, Steve Nash being fired beginning the 2022-23 season after seven games, Kyrie Irving being drugged through the streets like Cersei Lannister because he has unpopular opinions from time to time, 
by his own team and owner Joe Tsai at that. To them now losing KD and Kyrie for role players and picks that likely won't amount to equal value in the near future. A huge part of me can't feel too sorry for the Nets because I have to say they brought this on themselves. They allowed Irving and KD to think the team would pretty much be ran through them. Then when things got tight, they changed the plans and somehow made it a them against us thing with KD and Kyrie, starting with not re-signing Kyrie to a max. They should have never got into that all control bed with both players or at least keep word and sign Kyrie to the deal promised, seeing as on the floor, he's still one of the best in the game at his position and a huge element to KD's happiness. I believe when they didn't give Irving a max deal, KD and Kyrie sat down and planned out all of what's happening now. KD would request a trade in hopes the team understands that he's not happy with not maxing Kyrie, even though media wanted us to believe he was in fact unhappy with Kyrie Irving. Kyrie would opt into his deal collecting almost 40 million but with plans to leave after the season or sooner and KD would rescind his request to be traded to a destination team, then Kyrie would join that team in the 2023 offseason. I'm almost certain Irving will be a son next year. All the Nets got back in return was Michael Bridges, Cam Johnson, some picks to feature Ben Simmons and a Mitch Richmond second coming Cam Thomas, elite scorer who could care less about winning at this point. The Nets will be one of the worst franchises for a few years as they rebuild their deserved implosion for being the most fickle franchise in the NBA as of recent. Biggest loser number two, Russell Westbrook. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Actually, I'll ask a question. Which superstar has benefited individually, not in rings, from playing alongside LeBron? No shot at LeBron, but more his fanboys that love to place blame anywhere but on LeBron's plate for his failures in the past. LeBron's a great player, this generation's GOAT, but playing with him as a star never bodes well for your career. Even if he wins, he gets all the credit. When he loses, it's all your fault. Russell Westbrook's career suffered the most from this as before moving to LA, his career was celebrated. The king of triple doubles, former MVP, and the bar for point guards in this new era physically. But we all could see he wasn't a good fit next to LeBron, but not that it would be this bad. He was atrocious with the Lakers and exposed for being a horrible decision maker, turnover prone, and a horrible three-point shooter shooting 29% from three in LA. Of course, he's always been this, but it illuminated next to LeBron and now he's finally being traded from LA to a team in Utah that doesn't want anything to do with him. After most likely being bought out, where does he go from here? 34 years old, complete failure in LA on the biggest stage and exposed as a much lesser version of the former MVP and Hall of Famer he's been. If no team picks him up and he does the Carmelo Anthony beg tour, I won't be surprised. Biggest loser number three, the Memphis Grizzlies and Ja Morant. Ever since Ja Morant said on ESPN that the Celtics out east are his only competition and that he was fine in the west, it stuck with me that you can be a part of something and still have no clue what's going on or how it works. Saying something like that means Ja forgot about things like the trade deadline and how important it can be. He also seems to always forget that the Grizzlies haven't been contenders since their addition to the league in 95-96 and since he's been there haven't made it past the conference second round. Now that the weak West, as he thought, added arguably the East's two best players at their position to a team like the Mavericks and Luka Doncic and Phoenix and their now big three and a half, the Grizzlies and Ja Moran have a lot more to worry about than earlier as he sat comfortable and made those statements. Phoenix will definitely be in contention to win the West now and even though I don't believe in the Kyrie-Luka pairing, 
they too will be better than the Grizzlies, who didn't make a move to improve their team during this year's all-important trade deadline. Not to mention the Lakers got better, Clippers, Nuggets, even the Warriors all improved. What Memphis get? Lou Kennard? Good luck. All in all, it was an exciting trade deadline to say the least and I'm excited for this year's playoffs as there's no clear-cut winning prediction. The biggest winners are the fans who get to watch it all play out for their respective teams. My NBA Finals prediction, Suns in 6. What's yours? Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.